Welcome back. Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright. It is beautiful. We are going to talk about the one thing nobody's talking about, why Bitcoin is pumping right now, why Ethereum is pumping even more, and why potentially uh, the Bitcoin ETF could be approved any day now. So let's jump right into it. And I think the most important thing uh, to remember, if investors step back and think about the next three years of Bitcoin, you can keep it very, very simple, which is there's going to be a new source of demand called the Bitcoin spot ETF, the Ethereum ETF. They're right around the corner here. The second thing to be aware of is the decreased supply because of the Bitcoin having coming up in April. So for that very reason, go all in, get a mortgage on your house. This isn't financial advice. I'm just saying you might want to consider those things. And the thing that nobody really mentioned over the past, I mean, five days here, I haven't seen anybody talk about it. The liquidity chart that we do have so what is this chart? This is the chart of the Bank of China, PBOC, liquidity injections. They're stimulating like madmen over there. They just pumped more stimulus in now than they did back, which started the bull run here, if you ask me, uh, back here in... Right here, right here, off the lows at 15,000 bucks. You can see liquidity got up there. Way, uh, you know, liquidity injection, massive liquidity injection. Okay, what happens now? They start stair stepping it up, stair stepping it up, and boom, uh, the biggest injection we've seen as Bitcoin uh, made a higher low on the daily time frame. I wish the chart was a little more pretty here. I, I wish. They didn't always make me reset the price scale. But you can see on October 20th, big injection start. And what happens? I guess the Chinese like Bitcoin because you know they're buying Bitcoin out there. You know they're mining Bitcoin. You know the Chinese love them some Bitcoin. Um, and additionally, can they do more? Yes, the answer is yes. And what else do we have here on the bottom here? We have the stable coin supply. As that starts to go up, well, you can see um, you can see it. Bitcoin's price went up. Um, I wonder if this chart goes back even more if we look at the BLX index. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. And then additionally, major central bank assets, uh, major central bank assets. So, you know, I haven't done a deep dive into this one and exactly, okay. The green is the ECB. The Fed assets is the red. PBOC is the yellow, BOJ. And average assets is the gray line. Net USD liquidity is the blue line. Well, I don't get much from that chart, but I do get a lot from this chart. Big injection here. Bitcoin goes from 4000 bucks to $60,000. Big injection here. Bitcoin goes from 15000 to 30000 And big injection here. So let's say we get another double from here, as they are putting in significantly more liquidity, as we're about to get more cowbell, as uh, Raul Paul says. More cow bell. Call the cows home. What are they talking about? The investors that know when Jerome Powell has to print money, when Janet Yellen has to give up and say, we're going to put more on the printing press. Well, that's going to be very, very good for Bitcoin. Um, not for US dollars, but for Bitcoin. Needless to say, I thought this was something to take a look at here. And uh, yeah, you know, halvings coming up here, April 2024. We are six months away from the halving. So although some of the indicators are saying Bitcoin has, you know, maybe uh, topped out here, we're still closing above the nine exponential. Still making some higher highs and higher lows uh, on the daily time frame. 
higher low, boom, higher high, okay. Maybe not on a wick basis, depending upon what exchange you are on. But um, with the way Ethereum is pumping today, with the way Ethereum is just rocketing to the moon, I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Uh, just wanna get back to our four hour time frame idea here. Maybe a good idea to put on this chart here. Uh, I'm going to pause that. Boom. So notice we're coming into the end of the U.S. session here. And we did uh, almost recover this bit of a vector candle right there. On the hourly chart, we're about to get a good silver cross to the upside on Ethereum. Um, that's not what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at Bitcoin in particular at this moment on the four hour time frame. So we're talking about this range here. If we broke to the upside, we want to see it come down, make a higher low. I would say it's a higher low. Close enough is close enough on a wick basis. Yes, it is higher than this low. And we're also bouncing off the green 55. That's good. We'll cross momentum back to the upside above 34,797. So a good time to take a look at the liquidation levels. You can see a nice fat chunk of liquidity hanging in at 34,900. So um, do we send it down there first? I don't know. I, I really don't know when the stock market is doing something like this. And we're getting a bit of a bullish reset here as Bitcoin trades, I don't know, sideways, sideways since the four hour momentum crossed down and will cross back up again above 34,797. So could we get a Friday Santa Claus rally? Um, it's or Thanksgiving early Christmas present. Maybe, maybe not. But after a four hour consolidation like this, when this gets resolved to the upside of the downside by taking out the range wick highs, I'd expect a pretty, pretty darn explosive move. Um, however, momentum is waning now and waning to the downside. So mean reversion bounce, um, not a stopping volume candle there, not really there. Um, so tough, uh, Bitcoin about in the middle of the sand. But we did say this, look, if we broke to the upside, we're looking for that higher low on the four hour time frame. That would be your opportunity to go long. And what can have, well, we do see bullish divergence coming back, uh, multiple drives, multiple drives coming back from this low all the way over here. One, two, three, four, gets you a shot to the one, six, one, eight. Let's see if I can count that out. I, I, that's a new divergence indicator. So I'm going to use my regular one here and see if we can mark this out for Bitcoin specifically based on the four drive philosophy, which is in the course, uh, cryptcourses.com. You can check it out in the link in the description below. Um, but bullish divergence is probably one of the most powerful ways to identify uh, continuation drives uh, to the upside of the downside. And was this confirmed in my book? Yes, it was. Why we closed above. So somebody asked me in the gym yesterday, Scott, shout out to you, Scott. Uh, how do you confirm something? How do you confirm a higher low or a higher high or trend continuation? In this instance, I'm just going to talk about this. So in my book, you confirm a higher low by closing above that prior wick right there. So that would be in my book, a higher low. Okay. In my book, this is a confirmed high. Once you close below the wick, above the wick, below the wick, uh, smash that like button. If you're enjoying some of this education, if you're learning something here today, confirmed higher low by closing above this wick, confirmed high, I don't know, uh, maybe a lower high there by closing below this wick. Now, there is no textbook definition on who's right or wrong, who, who says what. Um, I think some people do use the FIB tool and say like above the not 0.5 is your confirmed higher low. Um, 
I don't know what's right or wrong, but that's just how I do it. And just marking this off here for demonstration and why. Um, so we get from this low. One, two, I mean, three, four, five. I wouldn't confirm that as one low or three lows on the, I would just count this as one because this is more like a complex low as we consolidated for some time and really confirmed it probably right there. So that's one, two, three. Here would be your fourth drive of hidden bullish divergence. So at a minimum, I would be looking for a run at the top side of the range at a lesser minimum. Um, lesser minimum. Oh, this is on Bybit. So good one to demonstrate on because they do have the wickiest price action. You are most likely to get stopped out on Bybit, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and is this going to happen overnight on the four hour time frame? As you can see, it can take some time. Um, and I would say that, what are we talking about? Well, hidden bullish divergence in this context is when the price is making higher lows, one, two, three. Technically speaking, I guess that's only three drives. So in my book, we're looking for a run at the top side of the range back at 35,652. 35,652. Um, that would be my target. And then, um, you know, maybe this trend line if uh, Bitcoin really starts to get going. What else is helping out Bitcoin today? Well, look at Dixie on the uh, Dixie did not have the move higher that I was looking for. So still a bit of a cone shaped, um, you know, downward sloping downtrend on the four hour. Got lower lows, lower highs, so trend continuation most likely. There is a bit of a gap fill, so if the dollar does pop back up there Monday morning off of whatever news, then that could be damaging to Bitcoin. Additionally, we said breaking back above here, likely to come and test this trend line. Didn't quite get up there, but um, what typically happens after big up days like this and you close on a Friday... Uh, maybe you get some downside on Monday. I, I, I'm not a stock market guy, but um, just food for thought. If the dollar keeps going down, I'd expect NASDAQ to keep going up, Bitcoin to keep going up. And um, if the dollar opens down or closes below this trend line, I would suspect we're coming all the way back down to this box of peace and prosperity or death and despair. Down here... Uh, Good for Bitcoin. Below here, great for Bitcoin. Back below here at 101, Bitcoin's at 50,000 bucks probably. I don't know. Um, if that happens, you're going to see Bitcoin light the sky up. Lighten the sky up, in my opinion. And they don't obviously always trade correlated as the dollar was down for some time here. And Bitcoin did not. Let's see if we can overlay the BTC chart here. BTC. Let's, should we do the BLX? Let's do the BLX index. Okay, so what has happened as the dollar went down? Well, I'd say Bitcoin went up. Okay, from here. As the dollar went up, Bitcoin went down. Okay, pretty correlated there. Dollar goes down, Bitcoin went sideways for a bit and then up, right, as uh, completing that rally. And then where does the correlation start to get thrown off? It's not letting me, it's not letting me move my lines around, but you could see here dollar down, big down day for uh, the dollar and Bitcoin started to rally. Dollar goes up, 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 up sideways and dollar down, another big peak there. And again, as the dollar marched its way, broke this trend line, that's where we saw the downside price action. So I'd say they're pretty, uh, pretty darn correlated if you ask me at the moment, at the moment. And 
Other than that, you're probably wondering why is Ethereum going up? I'm going to leave this video a little bit shorter and, or it's not short. My videos are never short. So thanks for hanging in there, guys. If you've been here with me for some time. Um, all right. ETH Bitcoin chart coming up here. ETH, wow, ARB up 7%. Rune having a big day up 20%. Dang it, I wish I would have grabbed a little more Rune. Um, big time hanging down in the dumps, and I would expect more of a buying opportunity in this case. Um, you want to buy when it's down and sell when it's high. Buy down, sell high. Okay, I thought I, there it is. So is this the W punchline? The only thing I don't like is there's not a tremendous amount of volume on this candle. We got declining volatility. So is this the reversal, the uh, decoupling? Not yet, but as, uh, as you've seen here, the ETH Bitcoin pair over the last 24 hours has really started to skyrocket. So that means during this entire period, Ethereum's been outperforming Bitcoin. Vice versa, during this period, Bitcoin outperforming Ethereum. So, how do we know that something different is going on here? Well, I just think it's a good time to zoom out and take a look at the weekly time frame. And could this just be another deviation below the range? Very quite possibly. So am I ready to call it yet? No, but um, you can see on the hourly time frame, we got a reversal on the four hour. There is the potential for, I don't know if I'd call that a W, it's more like a range. And I'd say back above this level at not 0.5334 Satoshis on the four hour time frame, probably good enough for me. Any kind of a candle body closure above there or here. So why don't I just draw it in and say above this level. And it's time for ETH to start parting to the upside. Could you call this a W? It's hard to, eh, it's too sloppy for me. On the daily, could you call it a W? Yes, you could, but there's not a stopping volume candle. So we want to see, there is one here. We technically want to see one here and one here. What do W's look like? What did W's look like? Well, they look like a W. So we go down, up, down, and then closing above the middle wick here, which is this guy right here, does give you, you know, potentially that opportunity for Ethereum to start to pump. And that's why I was saying the other day, I think Ethereum probably a little more un undervalued than Bitcoin. I still think the narrative Bitcoin is going to lead the pack. Bitcoin dominance taking a major leg down as well. Another sign for your alternate coins. If you want to live in that alternate universe called DeFi and start participating in some... Look at that W. That That's... That I could call a W, and this is one of the ones we talked about, ARB, and then Radiant. R, I need to put that one back on my hot list. RDNT, RDNT. Apparently, something is going on here. Oh, I, I, need, to, I need to get to the gym, guys. It's time for the gym. It's time for my workout. Anywhere here or higher on this one and probably looking for a run all the way back up to here at 33 cents for Mr. Radiant. Uh, this is one of the receivers of the ARB giveaway of 40 million ARB tokens, 40 million ARBs. So that's 40 million bucks they're dropping and, you know, still needs to get above here. To kind of get that next target, next pump up, but uh, looking bullish at the moment for Mr. Radiant. Do we have any volume on this candle? No, but we're back in the bullish control zone after rejecting, closing above the W. I would expect some continuation there. That's it out of me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, comment, or post something below if you hate it, if you think I'm just a fool. I love you anyways. All right, take care. Have a blessed day. See you next week.